Hello, everybody. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia. It's the weekend. DC Superheroes United is sort of crawling towards progress. Not much has been made, uh, so there's not a lot to cover. Also, uh, unfortunately, there's uh, it hasn't been the best time here. There, there was a death in the family this weekend, so it was just uh, there's a lot going on right now here. Uh, but I had a bit of time. And there wasn't much to talk about anyway, so I figured I would sit down and quickly hammer out just a quick update video for you on this game. Because uh, it helps me clear my head and just, you know, I can think of bat people and supergirls instead of all the other stuff that's going on in life right now. So it, it helps to sit down and just chat about this fun board game with all of you for a few minutes. So let's take a look at what has been revealed this weekend so far in the campaign. All right, so since we unlocked Talia al Ghul, uh, the next thing that happened was we got this wonderful thing, the Justice League International Team Deck. And as we open it up here, we take a look at the Team Deck cards, as colorful as ever. I love it so much. And it just talks about the, the Justice League International Team Deck and, you know, what that entails. The Team Decks were still... People who have been lucky enough to get their Multiverse Pledges have seen them in action now, I would assume, but to... The majority of us United fans, they're still kind of a, a mystery. Uh, we still don't really know how they're going to feel on the table. Same with the campaign decks. But it's still enough to get excited about, at least for me. So there's a list here of all the Justice League International team members. Though other heroes might still be added. You bet your ass they will. Uh, I'm hoping for lots of heroes being added. Because that just means more variety. So that is that right there. I mean, it's Justice League International, right? Not too much to say about it, uh, but it's looking good. It's got a nice variety of people. And then as we scroll down here again, a uh, Swamp Thing became the next hero in the stretch goal box. And man, this is uh, just such a beloved character. I don't know anybody who doesn't love Swamp Thing. He played a big part in a certain popular story, but his reveal in that story was a spoiler so I, I hesitate to just blurt it out but i will say that if we get campaign decks in this season and if those campaign decks include that one particular story then i'm looking forward to seeing how they integrate this big fella into that as well he is the avatar of the green here we go so he's gonna just be a basic hero with 12 hero cards he's got this big log coming out of the swamp that he's stepping over so cool Colors on his card are perfect. So let's see, this one here says Avatar of the Green. During any of your turns, if you are in a location with at least one thug and one civilian, flip this card to punch and rescue. There. Yeah, he's, Swamp Thing's really powerful. Uh, so imbued with the pervasive power of the green, the Swamp Thing has special effects on all his hero cards, with most of them being charged cards. Using chloroportation, which is a great word, he can move anywhere, taking others with him. Earth's life force supplies him with extra cards and ensure he can replenish his hand when damaged. He may flip cards to rescue or attack when he finds himself surrounded by civilians or thugs. Swamp Thing can use Toxikinesis, another great word, to unleash an unexpected attack. Or, if he stays planted in place for a little while, he may double his attacking strength. Now, I can't wait to do one thing that uh, a lot of fans have done in their heads, which is team him up with man thing all right if if i end up getting this game uh, and i uh, i will end up getting swamp thing because he's a stretch goal then uh, he and man thing are going to be pals apparently that happens very often is that the two of them get mixed up by fans right somebody will say blah 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 swamp thing blah 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 but they'll actually be talking about man thing and vice versa so now the opportunity for them to work together exists fantastic so swamp thing uh, was crawling and crawling his way up the stretch goals, and it took a long time. Uh, in the next update, they uh, just talked a little bit more about the painting compendium, so there wasn't too much to say on that, uh, just a bit more info on it. They said it's going to be meant for both beginners and seasoned painters alike. Uh, it's going to have an extensive photo gallery with a little bit of lore, uh, but just for a few featured characters, and it does confirm that this is the vast majority of minis in the game, though not all. So... Still kind of unclear as to how thick this book is going to be, but there it is. And it's made by the same team who sculpted the miniatures, so it will also feature a brief section dedicated to the sculpting process. That's cool. I did not expect that to be a thing. And then there will be QR codes where you can watch videos. For painters, for people who are crafty, who like to paint and sculpt, I have a feeling this is going to be a dream come true for you. And it's not, as far as I can tell, 
crowdfunding exclusive. So you might be able to pull this off a shelf one day in a year if you decide you want it. That's that's a nice little touch. All right. And then today on Sunday, they really help speed things along because, man, Sundays uh, and this campaign do not agree. But they really helped cut through the treacle with the team deck box, uh, which is cool because in Marvel United, we did not even see the box until many, many months after the campaign ended. We just were told we were getting team decks, but we didn't know how they would be given to us. So we got the team deck box. As you can see here, it comes with 10 team decks. Justice League, Justice League America, which is different, even though sometimes it feels like it's not. Batman Inc., Birds of Prey, the Teen Titans, the Outsiders, Gotham Knights, the Super Friends, the Superman Family, and United Heroes, which is the one, uh, if you're not familiar with Marvel United, United Heroes team deck is sort of a generic team deck. So if you're playing with any combo of characters who don't necessarily fit on the same team and you still want to use a team deck, this has you covered. So this is a $15 add-on, which isn't bad considering all the cards you're getting. And it says here just the information about how the team decks work. And you can go over that if you want to know the rules. So a quick look here at the Justice League, which includes all of these. I did not know all of these characters counted as Justice League characters. Like, But, you know, considering Justice League the cartoon, I get it. Justice League ain't exactly choosy with who they take. Justice League America, I know very little about the roster, but it's here. For reference, uh, and they have quite a big roster as well. And then Batman Incorporated, and if I remember right, the Batman Incorporated costume is uh, a little different than what we got here. I think it's a little closer to the Michael Keaton Batman costume, unless I'm mixing something up. But uh, obviously, they're just going to show what this costume is. They're not going to draw a different Batman just for this team deck, but it just comes with all these Batman characters that we've known so far. And the Teen Titans, who their cards are beautiful, very colorful. That might be the best looking deck in this whole box. And uh, of course, I failed to mention here, every team deck has a black card, which has a negative effect that is super thematic to the team itself. For example, this one, the Teen Titans, they're young. So it says these youngsters are not always in control of their emotions. So they lose cards if they perform too many actions at once. Um, and I, I think that's a perfect way to balance out how these team decks work. Birds of Prey, great team. The fact that Harley Quinn is not present here. I don't know, is she only a Bird of Prey in the movie? And then in the comics, it's totally different. Uh, it could be. I don't know the comics that well. But I believe they said somewhere in this update, and excuse me as I go all the way up. Yes, also note that many of these teams might still be bolstered by heroes revealed over the course of the campaign. Yeah, so it's a fair bet we will see Harley Quinn added to the Birds of Prey thing. Outsider is a team I know nothing about, but that's who's in it. Batman is in every team ever. Apparently, for a guy who likes to play solo, he sure makes a lot of friends. Uh, the Superman family, I'm surprised Batman's not in this one. But there's their team deck there. And the Super Friends, which is a great name for a team. And all the characters who were part of that cartoon. And then Gotham Knights, which is different from Batman Inc. Um, because I don't think it involves Batman, actually. Strangely enough, I think this is just his homies. And as uh, my friend, the Diversion Architect Dave, as he pointed out, this is the only back of a card we've seen where they've left one of the spaces blank. You can see here, every other one has a hero stuck into the top, but they left this blank. And I think that's because there is probably more to come in the Gotham Knights. And then United Heroes, the generic one. And there's the box. Uh, I don't know which Gotham Knight might be added. I'm going to assume it's a Robin, because that makes the most logical sense. Uh, I'm hoping for Tim Drake, but I know Damian Wayne is kind of a hot ticket right now, too. So I'll take a Damian. And then, thankfully, those helped us finally unlock Swamp Thing. Uh, poor guy was probably feeling very unloved. And now we have our next villain on the docket. And it is my boy Cyborg Superman himself. Hank Henshaw, a big, big villain in DC, who uh, is one of the first ones I was ever introduced to because, like I said, my first DC comic was Adventures of Superman 500, I think, where he uh, is dead. Is he dead in the... Yeah, he's dead in that one already. Doomsday's already killed him. And Cyborg Superman is running around, and uh, at the very end of the comic, he shows up and he says, I'm back. Uh, but you're immediately thrown off guard because he 
looks like a Terminator, uh, but he's claiming to be the real Superman. So Cyborg Superman comes with the Oblivion Stone token, and it says here he will get his revenge, but for that he needs the reality warping powers of the Oblivion Stone, and it starts in the hero's location, and Cyborg Superman will always fly directly to it, charging at a hero protecting it. That sounds terrifying. I hate when the villains always go right to you. Meanwhile, the stone is taken by one of his henchmen. We'll get to them soon. If the henchman is defeated, they drop the stone. However, if Cyborg Superman ends his turn in a location with a henchman in possession of the Oblivion Stone, he takes the token for himself, placing it on his dashboard. The heroes will need to corner him quickly and use heroic actions to pry the stone away from Cyborg Superman before the start of his next turn. Otherwise, he'll use it to achieve victory. So he's going to be, when he bams, I see deal two damage so he's dealing massive damage and from the sounds of things yeah it looks like all of his cards are going to say go to the space where there's the oblivion stone oh terrifying so he's like mystique he's just going to keep hunting you down and there's his henchman so for the first time we get a look at two big superman characters we get a look at metallo right here uh very interesting pose he's opening up his chest and the eradicator who I thought, you know, a Death and Return of Superman box was going to be a thing. At least I thought so. And I thought we'd be getting him as a purple anti-hero slash dual mode slash winky pinky poo poo character. But uh, that still is not necessarily off the table. Just the Death of Superman box is off the table. And then this guy named Blanc, who I don't know at all. And Mongol. Mongol's back. So to aid him in his quest, Cyborg Superman has got the, the Superman Revenge Squad, which is a great name for a boy band. As his henchman, Mongol is a very tough enemy that will wail at all heroes next to him. Metallo not only strikes hard, but the kryptonite shard he keeps in his chest neutralizes the abilities of any Kryptonian hero. Ouch. Eradicator attacks all heroes in his location and is able to absorb a fair amount of damage. And Blanc damages heroes anywhere in his vicinity and uses civilians and thugs to protect himself. If all his henchmen are wiped out, Cyborg Superman is always able to bring one of them back. Of course he is. Finally, if heroes can keep the Oblivion Stone safe, they'll need to clear the couple of Superman Revenge Squad threats before they can finally bring the fight to Cyborg himself. He's going to be hard. He's going to be very, very hard. Um, but that's him. That's Cyborg Superman. And now we are inching our way to unlocking him. We have... What do we have? Where's the numbers? Here. <laughs> One, three, sixteen. And I believe in order to unlock him, we need... 1360. So, 44,000 to go. Not gonna happen today. We can pretty much guarantee that. But tomorrow, hopefully, they'll drop another juicy, sexy box in our laps, and then that will start ticking up real fast. So, that'll do it for today. Hopefully, tomorrow we'll have a lot more news to cover. I might be able to get a video for you tomorrow night. I might not. We'll kind of play it by ear this week, to be honest. But until then, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, as we continue to make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. See you next time.